where x is the number of primes less than or equal to n. But luckily, there's something we call the prime counting function that tells us exactly how many primes there are. You know, you mentioned kind of like a measure of rationality. And so I had one question for you, like what's the sort of intuition on this on this rationality measure? It's actually a pretty well-known topic in well, physics. It's well-known, but it's actually quite difficult. Yeah. And proving the rationality of uh, zeta 3 is actually very celebrated. It's actually yeah. a very celebrated result. So this is actually quite a very, very important piece of work that you're engaged in. And, you know, to the extent that you can connect it to the zeros of the Riemann zeta function, I mean, if you were to do something like that, you'd be immortalized. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think it's possible, honestly. Uh, well, that it's was one of my questions. Topic. That was one of my questions, so I'm not going to ask that one. Yeah, I did address it in the end of the manuscript. If you took a look. Yeah, yeah, I took a little. I took a little. I took yeah. a little look at it. A little know. bit of a peek. A little bit of a peek. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I guess we'll uh, head we'll on head to the graphs that I have. everyone. Uh, it is a genuine pleasure to welcome to welcome you to today's uh, Mid Rivers College Colloquium. And uh, we're, we're, we're honored to have with us a suborno Isaac Barry, uh, a remarkable young scholar uh, whose uh, passion for mathematics has already garnered some international recognition. And so at just 12, He's the youngest student at NYU studying uh, mathematics and physics. And uh, he's, this work that he's going to share with us has been done in collaboration with uh, Dr. Wadim Zudalin. And it's about the irrationality of Zeta 2 and Zeta 3. And, uh, you know, Saberna will say something about the Zeta function, but it turns out that if one can say something interesting about the Zeta function, you, you'd be immortalized. Uh, so, it's it's one of those areas of mathematics that you know everyone is secretly working on trying to figure out the zeros of the zeta function but they don't ever say it because they don't want anyone to think that they might be wasting their entire lives so uh we're we're hoping that he's not actually working on the zeros of the zeta function but things peripheral uh to the zeros of the zeta function that might ultimately lead to uh some understanding i i, I should say you know, this is this is work that builds on, you know, really legendary mathematicians, uh, Euler, uh, Apere, and you know he's been, uh, you know, mentored by, you know, mathematicians like Barry Mazur, who some of you might know, and uh, and, and Sylvain Capel, so. You know, we, we, we think he's on his way to contributing to really deep questions in number theory uh, that we hope will continue to challenge us and inspire us uh, across the mathematical world. So we have this really wonderful opportunity to, to, to welcome Suborna to share his insights. And I, I should say one last sort of personal note. I, I somehow his name sounded familiar to me, but I wasn't quite sure. And then when we chatted, uh, he, he noted that he had come to Med uh, There was a guy here who was a former VP named Jerry Posman, and he visited with Jerry Posman as a two-year-old. It's magnesium. Magnesium! Oh my goodness! You know everything. <laughs> and this one? Good one. <laughs> or a two and a half-year-old, uh, and so and so, the colleagues joined me in. Uh, Welcoming Suborno back to Medgar Evers College. Welcome home. <laughs>